Hello, namaste. Yeah, Siddhananda's here. And so we're having a bit of a conversation on what it's like to be in this consciousness. And it is different. And it's really hard to explain to people what it's like because it's always that still center. And yeah, things play out around it. It will seem like I'm really angry or I'm really caught up or something, but that's not yeah. what's going on. It's it, in the center. It's just still. Yeah. It's like, you know, being in an ocean and under the ocean, it's still. And you have a wave that might come on the surface, but it's not touching anything mm. below that surface. So, you know, how can you explain that to people, that, that the mind is still, it's quiet, you don't have, there's nothing there going on, okay? And it's transient, these things. It's like secondary, that's, that's it, and it's, then it's, it's gone. But people here, you know, and, and that's, again, why it says, is it the Ashtavakar or the Vivek Chunamani, that the only one that can understand a realized being is another realized being. And that you can't judge by looking on the outside because they will appear to be like other people. They will appear to have that same interaction, emotions, drama, whatever it is. But all I can say is it's vastly different. There is no ongoing uh, charge of thoughts, it's just not there. Doesn't mean that the body doesn't go through a rush of emotion, you know, very quickly, but then it's it's gone, it's past. That's that's it. So again, you know, it was something that I was going to speak about, and it's something that's, uh, yeah, there's no way to even really describe it. There's nothing that you can give somebody that they could relate to mm. as to what it's like to be in that consciousness. Now, you experience to this point where there's some the falling away, mm -hmm. some stillness mm -hmm. and quiet. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah, definitely. So when that takes place, If there's some emotional thing that takes place, mm -hmm. is it not over much quicker? Oh, for sure. It's like you're, uh, anyway, at least when that's happened, more of a, um, you know, the word is detached, I suppose, but it's like it's, yeah, it doesn't, um, I don't know, it's kind of like it just kind of happens more of a spontaneous thing. Yeah, she says it's like being detached. It's like a spontaneous thing. And that's what happens when you get into witness yeah. state. Mm -hmm. You can see the body react. You can see the persona right. react. That's but there's nice. a distance there that at, while it's happening, it's mm -hmm. like it's happening to somebody else. Yeah, right. That that's you are watching this take place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a process. One gets to witness state. And then one watches the mechanisms of the mind and the emotional stuff that takes place. But one it has a buffer zone. Mm -hmm. One has a buffer zone. Okay. So when realization takes place. That's ongoing kind of thing. Yeah, there's no buffer zone. It's just that's, that's all that is. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. no witnessing of it. Mm -hmm. One is simply in the moment of that all the time. Yeah, yeah, no, I can see so, that. So that's... The difference between going from witness state to realization to that uh, mind of Turiyatita that no longer has this revolving thought process going on and it's just that clarity of consciousness. Yeah. So when, that's why they say it's like the ocean. One enters the ocean of consciousness, well the ocean still has waves on the top, okay? <laughs> But, you know, the waves are not, uh, they're not always present. They're secondary. Yeah. And one is always, even in the midst of the wave, the, one is still uh, connected and, and um, in the midst of that 
still yeah. still point. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's like almost impossible to try to explain what it is to be in that consciousness because it's such a radical shift mm -hmm. and it's not something that people can relate to. They can't relate to it because, uh, you know, at, at this point, it's been since 1999 when everything fell away. I can't even relate to how it was for me before then when I was in revolving thoughts and the so, dramas. So and long ago. Yeah. It was so long ago. Yeah, that's not my right. norm anymore. Yeah. For me, this is normal. It doesn't seem anything amazing or anything... Now it does for the first few years. <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> you feel very expanded and everything is just like, you know, you feel the leaves moving, you feel it in your heart and you feel it in your whole being. You feel these things and, and it's just more of a, uh, you're so open and there is no mind to judge anything that, so that all of these things are felt just absolute, just, you know, full blown. But then again, is it, as you go through the process, then things start to settle. And it takes about, what was it about, uh, maybe eight years or something before it totally, before it totally settles. And then it just becomes your normal state of consciousness. It's like, No biggie. It's just, it's just what's there day by day for yeah. you. It's your your norm, yeah, yeah. your normal. Okay. So again, you know, people want to know what it's like for enlightenment or realization, what, what it consists of. And all it consists of is when everything deconstructs and you find out you are not the persona. You are that which inhabits the form. And this is not an intellectual ideation about it that people have when they're going through. Well, I could see that. It's just, an, no, I mean, there is no longer any attachment or any kind of a um, feeling about that. That's why when realization first takes place, you have that odd phenomena of um, almost not being able to speak. You just want to be in that stillness, that silence. And it's at that point, uh, it took a while to be able to have a conversation with somebody because everything is blown out at that point. It's just blown out. And, it, and at that point, you don't, you don't use the words I you don't use you because it feels fake. There is no I, there is no, you know, there is not in your cognition any longer. So you say this one or this, and it's not that you're trying to manufacture something. That's just the reality of what is in the consciousness. And it takes a while, I think it took maybe three, four years to be able to try to, and you have to, again, cultivate dualistic speech. Yeah. <laughs> you have to cultivate, again, uh, speaking in common language of to, I, to relate to, relate to yeah. people. Because That's otherwise true. they think you're trying to yeah, you can't go around always present people. some kind of a, like you're higher or you're this or you're that, or you're trying to, it, it's not that at all. It's not coming from that place because what I am, you are, it's the same, you know, you're not seeing that, that I'm higher and you're still down here. It's nothing like that. that but simply there is no division. You're not seeing with eyes of division. So to say I and you, this sets up the vision, okay? So again, at that point, this is why they, one goes through uh, these changes along the way. It's just a normal outcome of when things uh, deconstruct, okay? So it's a process that takes place. First, there's an expansion 
first you have the heart, it expands, and then you enter that God consciousness where everything you feel and see is a part of God. Okay? And then one goes through the contraction. You go for full expansion, then contraction into that absolute bindu point of is. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the path. But people get to the expansion and they think they're there already. They think that's, you know, they think that that's enlightenment and realization and they've only just begun. There's much further to go at that point to come back and reach that contracted point, that and bindu that, point. Yeah. And that contraction with the senses, I don't know, I guess, you know, as you go more and more internal, you mm -hmm. know, it, it just, uh, I, it, anyway, I, I'm just going to only speak from some experience, so you could say whatever, but, you know, it seems like the eyes sometimes don't, aren't seeing the same or something, and different changes like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. As things feel like you're just so much more internal, kind of like you're not there. Right, like, you're seeing, yeah, that's what we call, there. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Seeing without seeing. Mm -hmm. You're seeing without seeing. You're now crazy. try to explain that one. But yeah. yeah, no, it's a phenomenon that takes place along the way. You're seeing without seeing. You're hearing without hearing. Mm -hmm. It's it's like not not really automatic pilot. But, but it kind of feels like you're not there. Yeah, you're not like there. Like you're you're feeling like okay. you know the eyes are registering a world, mm -hmm. and the eyes are registering this and registering that. But that's not what one is feeling within. Yeah. Okay, because I'm, I'm glad you're talking yeah. about that. Because lately I've just been, I don't know, just feeling more contracted. You're and feeling was, more contracted. I thought it was a little yeah. odd, kind of like this isn't my usual. Yeah. So just kind of. So I'm you're going you into the next up. level, the okay. next layer of that. So yeah, you go through the expansion and then you go back to that contraction. Oh, it felt strange. I'm glad you brought it up because yeah. I wasn't sure. It just felt a little kind of like I'm just kind of walking without being really there before it was like oh you could feel the trees and all this stuff and now yeah it's just more now you're entering this, that, this you're weird. entering that stage where it's, it's starting to come back to contraction okay, I was gonna ask okay. so Oops. it will continue to come back to contraction until you reach that part where you have to do that all absolute yeah. surrender into that death before the death where everything implodes and deconstructs yeah so now you're in the the other it doesn't motion. feel as a life feel to me. It feels just a little different. I don't know what it is. It, it does feel different. You know, this is what was going on when when I was in India. And every time I would step, I told you before, I, every time I would step on the bridge, yeah. I would be out of the body. Yeah. yeah I could see and you feel like you're walking and the body is moving like it's a puppet yeah. or something. You're not attached to that form. You're yeah. becoming dis, disattached to the form. Uh -huh. So that's just a, it's a yeah. strange feeling. It's very it's strange. Well, wait till your consciousness is out of here and your your body's walking yeah. and you feel like a puppet, like you're... <laughs> All sorts of changes. It's there else. are a lot of changes yeah, that one goes say. through. But yeah, in one moment, your consciousness may be in the body, but then it'll start being out of the body again to show you you are not that form. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the further one goes, the more you enter that seeing without seeing, and then again, the consciousness, you may be walking and all of a sudden, the body feels like a puppet and it's like, oh, come on, you gotta move. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, you know, mine's always gotten that slowing with mind and then my body is slower. I don't, I don't know if, I don't yeah, think the everyone body is goes slowing. through that. Right. But here, it's been a little bit, you know, I get that weakness, but also the, everything is slow, kind of like. Yeah. I, it's, it's an odd feeling, and it makes it, it's a little tricky, but, you know, I just go on. But that's part of what it is, too, that time, that, that difference. It shows you that time is not what you think time is either. Yeah. And that slowing starts to take place, and more of that, just that intricate seeing and then all of a sudden you start shifting into more of that contraction okay interesting for you to speak of because i just felt like it's different to not have that expansion so much lately yeah okay i'm glad this came up good deal yeah so this is what happens you start contracting back back into that but when when realization takes place then you will have again another 
feeling of like everything's just blown out. That's why it's called blown out. It really feels like everything is blown out and everything you thought you were is gone in an instant. And then the mind is still. That's when you really need to immerse in the Ashtavakra and the Vivek Chudamani so that you don't try to, at that point, try to make sense of what's happening, try to categorize it, try to, because that starts the mind again yeah. and will reroute into ego. I see that after yeah. happen. Yeah. You know, that way. So you're just great. <laughs> I'm just so glad that, you know, these things come up and that that was explained today. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, they come up when they're needed. So this is the time of that contraction is starting to pull back in now. Okay, so one expands out, gets to God realization where everything feels to be a part of God. You are part of everything. It, it very, it's blissful. Yeah. You're wandering around in bliss, and everything is just like. That's when you're in the height of the bhakti stage and you're just like everything is love and it's bliss and it's, you know, you're wandering around like you're drunk. Mm -hmm. Okay, then things start at that point. You start coming back to that contraction where you finally get to that bindu, that still point. Yeah, okay. And then you submerge into like the linga, into that zero point balance, into that primal is, into that, that, uh, that, what is it? Is it, it that uh, everything that will come into being, pregnant void, the yeah. pregnant void. Yeah, it's not a void of nothingness. That's why I hate when they say void because people think it's it's nihilistic, and it's not. It's absolutely more alive than anything one sees here. More alive than anything it has more substance, even though it has no substance. It's pregnant void with everything that will come so you into. Can't miss that. <laughs> you can't miss it. You cannot I'm it sure you can't miss that. No, though. it blows out everything yeah. at that point. Yeah, blows out amazing. everything at that oh, point. That day, yeah. And that's when you, you come out of that and your eyes are at that point, you come out and the eyes are registering the world and it's like the great universal joke is revealed. <laughs> at that point all you do is laugh. In one hand, you're laughing, and in the other hand, you're going, oh my God, now what? Your whole life is because gone. lifetimes, you've been searching, oh, and you've been on this imagine. path, and now you know that's the end of it. That's yeah. not, now what? I can't imagine that. Yeah. It's your whole, it's your every breath. It's your identity, yeah. everything yeah. that you had done for lifetimes no to doubt. get to that point, and it's blown out, and you know that's the end. There's nothing to search for anymore. Yeah. There's nothing. It's all revealed. That's it. That's now what? That's a trip. So, so it's a it real trip. So on one hand, you're laughing hysterically because it's the, like the great joke. Now what do I you do? couldn't have gotten away from it if you tried. It's part and parcel of what one is, minus all the illusion, drama. And in the second hand, it's like, oh my God, now what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. So it's really a mind. <laughs> it takes a bit to settle into that whole takes, thing. It takes huh? takes a while. Well, that's a whole other different type of thing. Like yeah. Across that. Exactly, and then you go through another whole set of, you know, that's uh, things settling. Yeah, that's, a whole other. that's that's another layer. Yeah. But yeah. then, yeah, then you go through a process of settling and stuff. But you, you'll be for a few years in that just absolute, again, another type of bliss, but also wonder, just, just absolutely. And with all that suffering. The colors are brighter. Everything is brighter. You feel everything. There is no distance with anything. And it's just over awe yeah. for a few years. Hmm. Yeah, for a few years you'll feel that. Well, thank you as usual. <laughs> <laughs> so hurry up and get there. Uh, okay. please. please put that out there, child. That's a spirit thing. Uh, exactly, exactly.
It's a long journey. Oh, People so that get on a path and think they're going to get enlightened in a year. <laughs> all the all the phases and stages and the going back again and going again, you know, it's really something else. It's beyond words. It's beyond words. And people but don't understand okay. there is a part that's like a hell realm that you go through oh, for, for a number of yeah, years. It, no it can be tough. Like I said, in that one part of the journey, I could barely take the next breath. I was praying for death, literally praying for death because it is just so overwhelming. Yeah, well, with me, you know, I've always heard voices, you know, so many things like that, you know, just yeah. the, all of that. Anyway, it, it's part of that, I guess, you know, and then you get the other, all those um, pristine visions, and then mm -hmm. there's the other. So it's, you know, um, it's something Well, else. that's it. This, you know, the cities come up, these powers, being able to heal immediately. I mean, di different powers, things just, they happen. You know, like the time I went to take my daughter, promised her to go to Disneyland when she was young and my car wouldn't hold water, the radiator, and I laid hands on it and boom, it held water till we got down there where we yeah. needed to be. Yeah. And that was it. I mean, so, I mean, these things, things like that happen. Things like that happen. Yeah. You know, their, you know, uh, ability to control weather was there for some time. And, I mean, just all these different things take place, but you find out that's not no. what it's about. And these are hindrances. These are stumbling blocks along the way. If one cultivates it, one can go very easily into ego drama of, uh, you know, rather than that surrendered humility that it takes oh, to, yeah. to go... Uh, they don't bring any kind of true in. happy in any kind of true like the Sat Chit Ananda. They don't bring that. Yeah. I, I at least for you know the different phases here, I don't find that at all uh, in the least um, that it's brought. You know. Um, yeah. No, peace. it doesn't bring. It won't bring peace. It won't bring lasting no, happiness. And it's it's you find out those are toys. Those are. Yeah you know tricks those it's are it's it's nothing you no know, and, and at first it's a little awe striking it's a little awe. oh yeah at first it's there's very there's no doubt about it but it, it just oh awe. exactly when the, the healing thing opened up for me first yeah. and i was standing in line and this is the way it opened up and i knew i was standing next to this guy my throat would hurt i'd back up it would stop i'd get closer it hurt and i, I just you yeah. know you could feel it i mean yeah. absolutely it was there and I asked him if he had a sore throat. He said yes, and I said, can I heal it? And I knew right away it would heal, and it was like, boom, like that, gone. Yeah. So, I mean, these things happen along the way, sure. but they are not things to cling to. That is not the object. The object is to know God and to continue to surrender into that, continue to surrender mm -hmm. and say, not my will, but thine be done, and continue to surrender. Yeah, oh, no. well, very nice. long path, oh, <laughs> a long, Lord. long, long path. <laughs> In I this lifetime, it was 30 years to get to that final point, and there were many, many lifetimes before that still on this journey, on this journey, so, yeah. but yeah, yeah. takes, path, takes a long time, many lifetimes, so <laughs> if you think you're just starting a path and you're going to get there in a year... <laughs> Good luck with that. That's all I can say. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that it's going to be an easy journey. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Look at the life of Christ. And basically you go through those. He shows the path that one walks. You have the feeling of the wilderness and the temptations. And, the, you know, you feel like you feel the, the pain of humanity. And you feel like you're literally on the cross and surrendering to that death you know that you're surrendering that ego self so yeah it's not an easy journey no, not by any means not an easy journey not by any means so i think we will close this out here namaste we're almost to a half hour so uh yeah didn't feel that long <laughs> yeah <laughs>